Hello crafters and welcome to Spring Into Sandart Online Craft Show, brought to you by From Picture to Page and Beyond Paper Craft Shows. I'm your host Wendy Stewart and I'm absolutely delighted to be here to host a few sessions for the show. So Spring Into Sandown is going to include demonstrations and interviews with our amazing retailers and guests. And we're beaming this right into your craft room, your living room, your cars if you're parked by the side of the road watching or having a morning tea break at work, wherever you are, we are delighted to be coming live to you from our Mount Waverley studios in Melbourne. So if you want to check any details of the upcoming shows or after you've watched a few of the past shows, please head to our website, which is from picture to page and beyond.com.au. While you're there, please make sure you've signed up for our email list so you get all the information of what's coming up and then you get links to all the details of how you can watch the replays um, What? Pardon me. while you're there. You'll get recaps, you'll get weekly um, updates, you'll get access to all the videos that we have. Now, if you're watching live or on a replay, on whether it's Facebook or YouTube, please pop in and say hello like the others have. Hi, Sue. Hi, Christine. Hi, Debbie. Hello to everyone there. Um, and as you can see, we may have some strange comments, so could you please just ignore them? Um, and we're working behind the scenes to take care of all of that. So we are very excited to have you here. And as you're watching, if you have any comments or questions, please pop them into the comment box and we will do our best to answer them either live during the session or our guest will go back after and answer them for you. So don't forget, give us a like, share us with your crafty friends and enjoy this amazing session. I am so delighted to welcome to Spring Into Sandown the one and only Michelle from Mixed Media Art Studio. So let me bring her on. Hi, Michelle. Hello. Hi, Wendy. Hi, crafters. How's everyone going today? We're good. We're so excited to have you here today. And lots of people are saying lovely good mornings to us in the comments. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Michelle, I think it's an absolute treat that you get to go first this weekend and I get to host you. So I'm absolutely chuffed to be able to do that. Oh, it's all fallen into place. We've managed to get some of the new products into the store yes. in time to be able to show off and have ready to go. Um, and I've had a chance to have a play, which is always good because you don't really want to play with new products no. live no. <laughs> on the internet. So yeah, I've had a chance to get ready to prepare some really fun demonstrations. So a little bit of media art. We specialise in art journaling, yeah. gel printing, really anything to do with mixed media. But as we know with paper crafts, we can take those skills and Absolutely. use them, you know, across any platform. So even though what we're doing today is art journaling, you could still use it to do backgrounds in your card making or for your scrapbooking or whatever you choose. And if anybody is new here, welcome. You know, if you don't know what mixed media art is, Michelle's going to talk more about it as she does her session. And please, once again, ask us any questions in the comments and we will do our best to answer them. And I can tell you, I just had a quick sneak peek as I walked through through the, through Michelle's front part of the studio into the actual studio where we're broadcasting from. So, you know, we're doing our best to follow all the rules with social distancing. So we're not really in the same room, even though we're in the same location. So we're so excited. And I can tell you, Michelle's got a treat in store for us so michelle mm -hmm. i'm going to give you a moment just to get ready and i'll come back to you thank you let's jump in so i hope you're all excited first session of the day we're so ready and happy to be here and i know michelle's got some great stuff to show us and if you're new please you know, please mention it so that we can answer any of your questions and help you to, you know, come over and try some mixed media art journaling, which is incredible. So I think Michelle's ready for us. So I will, Michelle, thumbs up if you're ready. Awesome. Here we go. All right. Over to you, Michelle. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Wendy. So like I said, today we're going to do art journaling inspired with the by that new art by Marlene range so first off she's got a fantastic release of new paints under the um, art by Marlene range there's four sets six come in each one and we're going to be having a play with a few of those today and then Marlene's new out of this world collection and I'm not sure whether you can see that that's actually got some foil on it as well yeah, we so, can Michelle the way you've angled it we certainly yeah. can yes. wow. yeah, so it's a really pretty collection of stamps of um, collage, die cut. So we're going to do our best to fit as much in as we can in the half an hour or so that we have today. Okay, so let's jump in. Now the challenge with mixed media art is that we often need to let our layers dry. So what I've done is actually got things in different stages. Right. So they're not going to all look exactly the same, yes. but they will be made the same. So this is kind of what we're heading towards. <gasps> wow. So you can just, you know, to help deconstruct it. So we've got our first layer of ephemera. Yes. Then we've got some paints, then we've got some stenciling, 
Then we've got some stamping. Gorgeous. And then we've got these focal points. And then this one I'm going to finish off with some embellishing. So we're going to step through those four key steps. So let's jump in. Fantastic. The colours are just stunning and they just absolutely leap off the page, Michelle. Exactly. So to start off with, I'm going to just do a nice little layer of some ephemera. So this I'm using, so Marlene's got two sets for Out of This World and this one's still black and white. Right. So you can just see it's just um, really fun little prints. And with the and option so, that you can colour it in any which way if you choose to. Exactly, exactly. So I've already oh, got wow. some torn up here okay. and I'm using my very favourite <laughs> Crafters Workshop Matte Gel Medium. Um, for those of you that have watched me before, you know, I basically live on this stuff. And what we're going to do is not think too much about it and just put down the layer. Now the key, this is sort of thinnish paper. Yes. If you're using tissue or rice paper, We'll talk about that this afternoon. You want to make sure you get an even layer or you're going to end up with wrinkles. Absolutely, yes. So that's the real key here is to have a little bit down on the background, put down your piece and then just go over it and then you're getting that equal amount of moisture on both sides. And I think you're actually so, just encouraging everyone just to be free with this and not overthink it at all. Exactly. It's like being back in kindergarten. Yes. And just having fun and, you know, putting it down fairly quickly, not overthinking it. I know when I teach this class, some people um and ah, and it's like, just tear it up, just, you know, put it down. And so quite often, I'm not trying to cover it all. We're just trying to put some interest in the background. Now, some people say, but what are you going to do that if you cover it up? So we won't be covering it all up. Yes. We're just using it to create depth. It was a real realisation. So I've been doing mixed media for about oh, 12 years. I think mixedmediaart.net's oh, right. yes. been around. And starting off, I admire other people's work. They had all those layers in it until I realised if I wanted layers in my work, you actually have to put the layers in. Like, very true, as, very true. As silly as that sounds, it took me a bit, you know, I was quite impatient. I wanted to get the depth without doing the work. Yes. So, so what I like to do is actually kind of join them a little bit so they sort of got some friends that kind of lead you across. We always want to make sure we've got a little bit hanging out over the edge. Yes. You know, sometimes with mixed media, because card making me very much, you know, sit within a frame and scrapbooking is a bit as well. With mixed for media, sure. we want to make sure that it goes out over the edge. For sure, for sure. And quite often, you know, if you sort of have each edge and one sort of top and bottom, then that sort of just gives it a bit of balance. Oh, so here's some really cute little letters. Oh, that's very cute. Yes, Trish, Trish is saying on the comments that she loves tearing and pasting. <laughs> She's very good at it. She did one of our art journaling classes last year. Oh, wonderful. And certainly as soon as we open up again in Victoria, we will be having more art yes, journaling classes. Definitely. And I've been experimenting with taking this onto canvases as well. So wonderful. we're definitely going to be having a class in that. Yeah. Okay, so you Michelle, can see would you feel... please be able to hold that jar up to the camera again? Kathy's just asking. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Kathy, yeah, that's so the... matte gel medium that Michelle yeah, has so in store. Yeah, so it's an adhesive. It's a glue. Yes. But what it does, it's matte, which means it doesn't dry shiny. Yes. And the one that I love, the reason that I love this is that it dries completely and it doesn't stick. The importance with art journaling yes. is you don't want your pages to stick together. And this is a really good way to make that doesn't happen. Wonderful. So, okay, Thank so you so you can much. see I've covered, what, 60% or so? Perfect. I'm going to Perfect. put all these little bits. Wendy, remember when we did that session about using our leftovers? Oh. I keep all these little bits. <laughs> Michelle, <laughs> Apparently I still some don't have any throw leftovers, them out. just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Um, Michelle, Leanne's just asking, so you don't have to gesso first. I know I've, I've not gessoed first quite often. Um, oh, so I didn't mention these are the Art by Marlene Raybo journal books. Okay. And I don't tend to because, as you see, when I do my painting, I'm not trying to get the paint to move a lot. If you want, if your right. paper's a bit thinner yes. or if you want your paint to move, definitely gessoing. Um, it's more that I'm just impatient <laughs> more than Fair anything. Enough. Fair enough. Leanne, I hope Excellent. that answered so your question. So, yeah. Yeah. So, if you want to um, gesso, sorry, go yes. for it. But you don't need to. The matte medium actually does seal the page a bit as well. Yes, it does. And I know, yeah. like I said, this is, um, I think this is like nearly 300, is it 100? GSM. So, you can hear it's quite yes. thick. So, it's made for mixed media. Yeah. Okay. Here's one I prepared earlier. Wonderful. Leanne, you're most welcome. We're happy to help with any questions that we can. Oh, no. 
Isn't that looking fantastic already? It's okay. I've dropped the paint. It's I've okay. She's it fine. She's fine. She's just um, she's just picking up her beautiful goodies that she's going to show us. Oh, so, these lovely paints are rolling all over. Yeah. Michelle always encourages us to know just be a bit free with our art journaling. Don't overthink it. Just put you know put the pieces on the page, and you know the, they will tell the layers themselves will tell you where you need to go with this. So. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't have a precise plan before you get started. Just go for it and have fun. That's the most important thing. Okay. Now, a little bit of paper towel here. Yeah. Just so I can feel free to go right up up to the edges. Absolutely. Um, look, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just sort of make a bit Absolute, of a mess. Yeah, but absolutely. As, and I've also put, you know, like cooler. baking paper or old tissue paper or mm. anything that's lying around that will prevent, you know, if you don't want to mark your page underneath or, or the surface you're working on. So, Excellent. Now, as those that have been following me for a while know, quite often I'll lump into, leap into colours and then try and find a focal point. Today we've actually got a focal point, so I found some colours okay, to match that. Okay. So we're going to be using the Light Blue Heaven. Wonderful. You see that, okay? The mermaid, which is sort of a light turquoise. Oh, that is gorgeous. The blue smurf. And then a bit of the ballet oh. for the pink for the crust. So, again, this shouldn't take too much time at all. Okay. So what we're going to do first. So I use a palette if I'm stenciling, but I don't usually use a palette for this. So um, I've been talking to Marlene. These paints have all been made completely in the... Um, in the EU, they found someone over there because Marlene's based in the Netherlands. It's all um, quite high quality paint for sort of what you call a craft paint. <clears throat> so you can see there I'm kind of smudging it around, getting a little bit of water in my brush to feather it out. But that's all we need. You don't actually use a lot of paint. It goes a long way. And as you've always taught us, Michelle, less is more, less is more. You can always add, but you can't take away. So Exactly. And I find if you start with your lighter colours, because we want a bit of light or white area because it helps draw the eye Definitely. to the focal point. But if you don't start with that, you'll end up, it's hard to put it on top. So the other thing I've got is a bat, because I've found this new technique. Now, I don't know whether I've discovered it or whether I've just found it. So I'm taking this second colour, which is mermaid. Yes, I'm going to put a bit there and a bit down here. I'm going to get a clean brush. But what I'm going to do is use the white to help blend it. We want to make sure there's not too many sort of hard edges. Yes. But if we add too much water, what happens is that it dilutes the paint and then we sort of end up with more of a wash. And sort of that's the difference in the quality of paint. The better quality paints have more pigment in it. Now, can you just see all we yes. want to do is just sort of take some of that edge off. Definitely. And it just sort of takes, not well, takes the edge off. It just helps to blend it out a bit. And it helps, it helps make the colour transition so much more smooth looking. Yeah, exactly. And we're going from lighter to Light darker, to dark, so yeah. that makes it easier as well. So then finally we've got our Smurf. And Michelle, there's a couple of questions, if you don't mind, please. Mm -hmm, of um, course. Debbie's asking, can you refill those paint pens when they're empty, please? Um, look, they've just been released yes. and I don't know. We're going to have Marlene on this afternoon. Ask her then. Oh, wonderful. Yep, we'll make a note to ask that question for you, Debbie, so stay tuned. Yeah, so Marlene was telling me that she's designed them so that they're easy to put in your hand. Yes. They're designed to be stored down so that you'll always have the paint at the nib. Right, okay, yep. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Just let me move this before it dries. I'm going to get a tiny bit of water there. And once again, and you, you can... really haven't used a lot of paint to get such a beautiful effect. No, and you can see how much pigment, even just by wetting the brush, you still get quite a bit of colour yes. into it. Okay, then again, baby wipe. You want to do this before it dries too much, once yeah. it's dry. Yes. But sometimes it's one of those things you just, as I always say, you need to know your paint. Yes, you do. And then you sort of know sometimes you want to leave it a bit longer and then you sort of buff it and you sort of go and adjust. And, Michelle, you're not using any specific type of baby wipes or any baby wipe should be okay? No, just, just the cheap ones. Cheap, you don't yep. want them too damp. Yes. So, yes, like I said, there's that. Can you see that fine nib? Gorgeous. Yeah, so it just makes it a little bit easier to get the paint out to control it. Okay, so there we go. Now, the other thing, again, not that I'm necessarily created this, we just want a tiny bit of this, almost like a, 
I don't know, there's probably a technical painting term, but like a mist or a bit of a, a wash, that's probably the right word. We'll go with so that. I'm just <laughs> going to use the baby wipe and then just... Oh, Can you see how fantastic. it adds a little bit of colour? Now, I mean, you do need to sort of have a bit of colour theory, but with mixed media, because the paints underneath are already dry, we're not actually blending it, we're sitting yes. it on top. Yes. Now, we can see that it's probably a little bit lighter this side, so if we just wanted to add that little bit more, we can just do that. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Now, Christine, while we're here, baby, Christine's just asking, is the baby wipe mm -hmm. wet, damp, or dry? So I've always used a wet or a damp mm. baby wipe, not usually dry. Yeah, no, it's, it, it is wet. So it is helping us just move it around without diluting the paint. Um, you can all touch it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's the only way, isn't it? Um, so we want to do a little bit of stenciling. So you can yeah. see that. So this is the time where I do use a palette. These sponges I use are makeup sponges from the big chemist places. Yes. Now, what did we want to do? What did I do from the last time? So we've got these really funky stencils. And these are Marlene's some of the got, new Art by Marlene range yeah, as well. Yeah, these show? are the, there's four in the Out of My World yes. and there's three in the new Essentials range. So these are kind of, can you see, the sort yes. of funky shapes yes. and there's letters yes. and numbers. So again, we just want to add, we want to build up layers. So we've got a layer of ephemera. A layer of paint. Now we just want to add some stenciling. Now the key with stenciling, and I'm not always very good at, it, is de less is definitely more. <laughs> As um, Cheryl Biglioli told us, pounce on, pounce off, pounce on. So we just want to keep it nice and light, just to add that little bit definitely. of interest. We're not trying to make it too bold. No. And just keeping it there, building it up really slowly. It's, um, it can be very meditative. It can be frustrating when you're in a hurry. So you're better off just using just that tiniest bit. And Narelle is starting her shopping list already, Michelle, just so Fantastic. you know. Fantastic. <laughs> yes, we are happy to enable. We are going to be champion enablers this weekend, Michelle, tomorrow we night. We are. It's all for our mental health. It's it so sure we can is. It sure is. have a play. There we go. So, again, we're just using it. Now, I find also because so this has got a fan pattern, yes. sort of having more in, um, paint in the middle and then sort of having less as we come out. Great. So that just gives us that little bit Oh, that's there. fabulous. And remember, you don't have to always use the whole stencil. You know, newsflash, you don't have to use no, the whole stencil. No, you don't. You can just use parts of it. And particularly, you know, as you experiment more with different size artwork, you know, if it's bigger, then you're definitely going to more of it when you're just doing small pages like this just a small bit is fine definitely and you know we talk about composition a little bit in our art journaling class that it's just that basic rules of odd numbers so I've done two patches and I want to do a third, third one yes. just so we've got that three sometimes I'll do three and then decide I need five <laughs> so. and sometimes five becomes seven <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, it depends on the size of um, the mark making you're doing. So you might just mm. need, you know, you might just think it needs a little bit more of a pop after you've finished and no harm in adding another layer. Exactly. Now, this is fairly dry. Like I said, normally if I wasn't doing it live, we just let it dry a little bit longer. Yes. I'm now going to do some stamping. So this is a really fun set called Writings. Oh, that's fabulous. And so Marlene's got a new range that's Essentials by Marlene as yes. well. So it's sort of separate to her other releases and they're just – they're just stamps that you could use for every day. So I, I know some people stamp without a block. I just I struggle, so I still prefer to have an acrylic block. And today we've got these little really cute minis. So these minis come in sets of four, and they're such a fun way to add colours. And the cool thing is that they're waterproof. So you know with your mixed media layering, as we add layers on top, yes. they're not going to smudge. So yes. this is manganese blue. Stamp it up, and then I want to put there. And then, because we don't like wasting any ink, we can do that oh, and no. that. <laughs> we can't waste anything. Absolutely not. And even that baby wipe you were using, I would have an, you know my I would have another journal open ready to go, and just use that paint to 
put you know the first layer onto pages and so you're not wasting the paint either mm, exactly and that's certainly what we'd normally do so there we go we've got a little bit of that um, I can't remember what I used on the others so not to worry now cleaning stamps look I'm usually not too fastidious but because we're stamping onto paint I do yes. want to make sure that we don't get any paint onto our beautiful rubber stamps so Michelle you'd advise to you know clean them off immediately if you've yeah. used paint on any of your stamps because of, yeah, definitely if you're using yes. paint this is ink I'm just finding that if using different colored ink sometimes the black really does come through so it's worth just cleaning it off a little bit yes Anyway, not to worry. So this other colour I've got is called Cactus Flower, but it's sort of a nice beautiful match. I love matching my inks to my paints. That's gorgeous. So always, again, when you come and do classes with me, we encourage you to have that second art journal document what colour you're putting on, and then you can practice what colour inks go with what. So you can see I'm sort of filling out this middle section here. Michelle and Helen Morgan's asking if you had any idea how much that stamp set would be, please. This stamp set, it's definitely on the website. Sure. I think this one's 28. Okay. So the new Art by Marlene range, there's two distinct types of stamps. There's the rubber stamps. Yes. Which are these. Yes. And then she's come out with the cling. So this is the cling rubber mounted stamp. Yes. And she's also got some polymer ones. So there's a, quite a big price difference. Yeah, so I you think that one was tell. about $20 when I looked on the website. I think. Yeah, so this one you can see it's it's the polymer. Yes. So it's definitely no less in quality, but we just know that it's, you know over time this, this isn't quite as robust as this. So that's, sure, that's what you're sure. paying for. They're still, very good, they're still very good quality stamps. So it just depends definitely. what you're Definitely, yeah. For. I've, got, I've had no qualms. You know, some are really hard to get off the backing. These are good. I've yes. actually in the past not this brand broken some stamps trying to get them off and look that's a brand new one and that's not too bad at all yeah, wonderful thank you michelle okay how are we going for time so that's our second layer yep you're going well michelle so we've added our ephemera we've added our paint now we can see that we can see through our paint because we know that it's translucent because we've already practiced yes. we already know our paints we then added some stenciling and we've added a little bit of stamping so we're starting to get some interest in that background it's looking fantastic, said, Michelle. Okay, so next, so yeah, so colours, that was Heaven, Mermaid, Smurf and Ballet. Is that all one set, please, Michelle? No, no these are over three oh, different no, no, that's sets. fine, that's fine. Just, just asking yep. in case the ladies wanted to know, so... Yes. And gentlemen, no, sorry, can, there could be gentlemen watching. I can run through the sets if we've got some time at the yep. end. Well, Otherwise, like I said, they're all on the website. Yeah, you've got about 15 minutes to go, Michelle, so you're going all right. <laughs> Excellent. So now our third layer. So here's one that we've already got. Um, so we're adding some die cuts. So Marlene has got these fantastic die cuts. Cuts and these out of the world ones have got glitter. Can you see that? Oh, yes, can we can. Glitter? They look so and cool. Marling tells me, which I didn't realise, that one page has glitter and one page then doesn't. Brilliant. So you sort of have the best of both worlds. So there you go. So now we're going to be using this cute little bird. But the other thing that I've done is taken some of the coloured paper and actually stamped on it. And then we can sort of cut that out and use it as well. Definitely. So. Said, I won't do that now, but that gives you an idea. So all those stamps you've got, you can suddenly turn them into, you know, backgrounds yes. that will match your yes. paint range as well. And you can also colour further if you are so inclined to do that. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we're getting our matte gel medium out again. So when I press the die cuts out, sometimes they have those little those little bits on them. Yes. Um, yes. There is a technical name. My engineering brain's not working. It's so it just, yeah, it just helps keep them. So I usually will trim that. And these have cut fairly well to net, but I sometimes will trim the edge just that little bit more. Sure. And then we will, oh, that's what we're going to do. And you can also use yeah. just, you know, an, a, a nail file to just um, smooth the edges yeah, of the die exactly. cut. And, and then what I like to um, do is... now what you're about to do as well, that also helps. So Yeah, so using just, this is a, um, a pit pen, a grey one. You could I find black sometimes a bit heavy. Is just run it around, can you see what I'm doing? Yes. Run it around yes. the edge. Yes, we can, yep. And it does take a bit of practice. Um, Sophie from Scrap Mats also suggested she's 
it does a lot of paper toll. You can just use a grey lead pencil as well. Oh, okay. So that's probably a bit more forgiving than this. And um, you just want to make sure it's something that won't run when you put the glue on. So it just takes that white edge off because we're putting yes. something coloured onto a coloured back. Now there, see how I can see that little bit of white there and I don't like it? No, yeah. So what I'm going to do is just, yeah. see that? I'm taking it off. Yep. There we go, just to help take that off because that sort of stands out. So we've talked about composition before, we're taking our page into thirds. I'm going to sit our little friend over there. I'm not sure if he's a happy bird or a thoughtful bird, this one. How about a happy, now, thoughtful bird? <laughs> <laughs> now, because we know we've got, um, you know, waterproof inks, we know we're right to go over that. Yes. If you do this and yes. you find it smudging, look, just be really gentle. Sometimes you might just have to not, you know, smudge it so much. Now, when you're doing backgrounds, you sort of don't mind having all the line, <clears throat> lines in it. But sometimes when you've got a focal image, you can see there's sort of some paintbrush lines in that. Yep. Yeah. Yes. One way to yes. do it, I find you can either just get a little bit of water on your finger, so we don't really want to dilute it, but just enough. If we smooth that, it takes the lines off it. Gorgeous. And it just embeds it in the page so beautifully, Michelle. Yeah, it does. Okay. <clears throat> so that is our third step. We've added our focal point. So we're now starting to really tell our story, but sometimes at this stage I still don't quite know where this is heading. Right, okay, yeah. So, oh, hang on, I know where it is. Okay, so our last bit is all about embedding and finishing off. So here's our page. This is where I've already stamped onto that paper and stuck it down. And there was a cool one here that oh, was a bit of a so nest. Cool, so I've added that as well. So now what I want to do, how am I going for time? Oh. We wouldn't want to run over on the no, first No, no, you're session, going well. You? You've got about 10 minutes to go, Michelle. Yeah. So you can either use paint, but I really love using these Faber-Castell pit pens. Now, I get mine from Officeworks when they open again. Yes. Um, and they're just such a lovely way of adding colour. But because it's um, it's a special kind of it's India ink, yes. so it allows you to um, blend it a little bit as well. So if you can see here, see how this kind of has a really solid line? If we want to blend it in a little bit, we can sort of go like this oh, and then just with our finger, just smudge it. And it just looks like it's appearing out of the page now, not, you know, a separate yeah, element, which just is what a beautiful helps. way to, you know, to embed it in. Exactly. So what we're actually doing is bringing the background forward. So that's the cool thing about mixed media is we can sort of play. And sometimes if I've added an image that then doesn't match the background, you can just add some of that oh, colour back in. yes. I did that. Somewhere I probably won't be able to find it, but I did that. I had a very red and orange background, but the um, figure had a little bit of green, so I just added that little bit of green in, and gee, it made a difference. Yeah. Michelle, may I get you to? Oh, you're moving the book just a little bit to the left. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yep. There you that? go. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, we want to blend things in. The other thing we want to do now that I'm looking at this one, I can see that white spot. So we want to just take that out, just like we did before. Yeah. There we go. And the other thing we want to do, like I said, is embed it in. So we want to use some sort of water-soluble crayon. I love the um, Dina Wakely sticks for that. Oh, they're my favourites too. I want to use, I've got them all jumbled. So rather than using a black, and this is something that Dina Wakely suggests, is actually using like a dark blue. Gorgeous. It's not quite, oh, it's not quite as um, heavy, but it still gives you that same effect. So what we want to do, and again, it's always sort of hard when we're rushing, but just draw the outline around it and we have no. we have Teresa, Teresa joining us from Michigan USA so welcome Teresa uh, I hope I said your name right sorry so this takes a little bit of fiddling and sometimes it feels like you've done it really dark and it feels like you've ruined things but because I mean these are water active and will sit on the top so we've got an opportunity so the way I sort of learnt to do this is you just do it slowly. Yes. Sometimes you need to walk away. Sometimes you need to take a photo, you know, all those things that we suggest. Absolutely, when absolutely. And you can see how that's just, like I said, it's really subtle, but how that's starting. Can you see here? You can yeah. just start to see. Would you be able to, to move that to the left a little bit, please, Michelle? Yep, thank you. That's perfect. That's centre screen. Yeah. Thank you. It's just starting to give it that little bit of shadow. Definitely. Which perhaps, you know, counterintuitively actually helps it set up. Sit up. 
there we go. Now, some of the other things we might do to embed, like you said, we've got that. Now we're going to need to wait until that dries. And we're not good at waiting, are we, Michelle, you and I? Oh, my goodness, we are not. So the other thing, of course, we love to add words. So part of um, Art by Marlene's Essential Range is she's got these sticky quotes and I'm very excited, we've got rub-ons. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you remember having those as a kid? So this comes with six sheets, five pages of alphabet and then a page of quotes as well. So the cool thing about rub-ons with mixed media is that you don't have a background. It helps to really, you know, embed yes. your words. So I'm not going to play with that because that's going to take us a bit long, but let's find a quote. So this comes with 10 sheets of white with black and then the same in reverse. Brilliant. With the white writing in the Absolutely back. Absolutely brilliant. So what have we got? Shine like a star. Don't be the same. Be better. Oh, I like the sound of that. No, oh, I like that, Michelle. I like that. So I'm going to pull it off, but I don't like the corners. So I'm going to find some scissors. I had some. Honestly, I did. You did. You did. I saw them. And Michelle, Pat's just asking what the brushes that you're using, please. Ah, so these are the Dina Wakely Media brushes. And they've been well used and well loved. <laughs> so they come in, I think we've got like single ones. We've got sets of sets of four is probably my favourite at the moment. Definitely. It gives you a nice thick one. You see the thick ones that I used. So what I want to do is just cut some of this white away. I don't want to make it disappear altogether, but I don't want it. But you don't no, want that much white off. either on the. No, and we don't like sharp corners. Now, quite often I would actually do this, pull it off the backing. So now I'm realising my mistake. So, Pat, if you, check, if you check the website, the brushes are all on there for you to have a look at. Um, and I think Michelle has a few in stock for you to purchase. Yeah, maybe. definitely. The set of Thank four you. is $22, I think. And they're just – these ones have just lasted oh, so well. Of course, yeah. make sure you don't leave them sitting in water overnight. No. You, know, you need to be nice to your brushes. No, oh, But they okay. really are fantastic brushes, Pat, so hope that helps. Yeah. It's just nice to have – Again, you need to know your brushes. Um, some are better for, like, stenciling than others. Yes. Okay, so now we can see we've trimmed that down. So, again, I've got this here, and I want to put this up through here. But, again, once you do that, it just it jumps out because it's so <laughs> it's so. It does, white. and it also highlights the background behind it, which is lovely. Mm. So Yeah, exactly. So what we want to do is just, again, we don't want to, we don't want to lose the whole thing, but we just want to just... Yeah, take off it a little bit. Wonderful. Yeah, and then just to, like I said, sometimes we can do this with the paint. Sometimes we can do it with the markers. So there's just a few different options. It's just about working out what you'd like to use and what you know goes best with your that particular project at the time. So yeah, it's a, and it's a real balance when it comes to your quotes because you don't want to lose them, or else no. they're too hard to read. But you also need to embed them a little bit or. You're just going to um, make them. Yes, definitely, because you you want them to look, you know, part of it and embedded into your into your beautiful spread that you're doing. So yeah, and because that's sort of, I'm not real happy with how that's gone. I'm going to just do a little bit of yeah. paint and hopefully not make too much of a mess. But again, Don't a paint with the baby wipe. There you go. Yeah. So maybe this is actually quite. I probably need to put just a bit of gel medium over it because that would help. Yes. I think yeah, just bring that. Yeah. That and then, like you said, you get the hang of it. So Definitely. the other things we do, we can then use our Posca pens to do some outlining or some journaling, um, scribbly letter stuff. Um, the other thing I would probably do here is sort of create a bit of a horizon. Yes. So use something like a watercolour pen to sort of do that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And then, yeah, just sort of pull that down yeah. just so our nest has got a bit of a bit of grounding, Something. a bit of foundation. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, and then this is – sometimes it's hard to know when to stop. Yeah, I know. Um, it's like walk away, I think Michelle, art journey <laughs> is a big question. Look, what I think is if you think of something that kind of adds to it, that's great. If you suddenly go, oh, what it needs is a big orange – no, as soon yes. as your thinking starts diverging again, definitely. then it's definitely time to stop. So if I've just got a few minutes, someone was asking about the paints. So, Michelle, we've probably got about five minutes of our time left yeah. together, just oh, so you know. All these people that talk too much. So these are the <laughs> sets. I had the other one. 
Here it is. So, yeah, so we've got the favourite set. So that's got the lace, pitch, ballet, mermaid and happy. I did do a swatching session and the in-depth of the paints last Saturday on the Creating Mixed Media Art Facebook yes. page. And that's on our YouTube page as well. So then we have Moody, which has Ooh, got hot that. curry, ho, 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 oh. the fuchsia and smurf. Lavender, which is a really pretty yes. um, purple for Wendy. Yes. And Kermit. <laughs> We've then got Calm, which has got some of the more pastel colours. And for those that do face painting, sort of the tobacco and sand are some really nice shades. Yes. And then finally we've got some funky neon. I love neon. that too. Oh, my God. I mean, some I love really them all, but I love bright that. bright colours. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then just before we finish up, we do have a show special. So at our Mixed Media Art Studios, which you can find at mixedmediaart.net and click on the Shop Now button. We've got free shipping for all over forty dollars when you use this code mixed media art sandown s a n so m m a s a n twenty one and if you use that code at checkout you'll get free shipping for all orders over forty dollars up until the twenty fourth of October. That is fantastic and so generous of you, Michelle. So how about I give you a moment just to um, swap over your camera and we'll come back and have a chat before we say goodbye. Okay. Thank you. Wasn't that incredible? There's so much you can do with all those wonderful products. And I know there was a question. Kathy, the sticky notes are from Art by Marlene. They're on, on in Michelle's store, so just have a look for them over there. So I think Michelle's ready for us, so let me bring her back. Thank you, Michelle. That was incredible. I love all those oh, ideas of how you welcome. can. So did you? You had a question about the, stick, the yes. stickers. So, yeah, they're the Art by Marlene Essentials. Yes, yes. Um, and the rub-ons are also. So if you go to the website and type in Marlene or rub-ons, yes. you'll find them that way. Yeah. Which is all good. I, I think that was just incredible. <laughs> Learned so much, so many, you know, and for those of us who have been doing it a while, good to just revise and revisit and, oh, yeah, okay, that's what, you know, we did. So you're getting a lot of love in the comments, Michelle. Everyone mm -hmm. really had a great time. It's been oh, such, a, such a privilege to host mm -hmm. you for this session. Yeah. And look, just to remind yourselves that when you jump into mixed media, there are so yeah. many options. So this is the way I do it. You're welcome to get to know your yeah. products, to experiment. And it is so nice for me to have a little bit of a formula that I know if I follow this, the most of the time I'm happy with the results. Absolutely. And the thing is, just have a go, have some fun. You know, it's just a piece of paper. So just get in there and try it if you've mm -hmm. never tried it before. And, you know, you never know, you might just love it. Oh, it certainly is a reflection on life. Like I said, it brings out any perfectionism tendencies that you learn to squash. It takes that inner voice and we get to take <laughs> and have a chat with that. Um, there's so many life skills in mixed media art, Jen. Definitely. And it just gives you the, you know, you're not that you need permission, but permission to have fun, just let go and be free and enjoy your products and enjoy creating. That's And that's what, you know, that's what we're all here for at the end of the day. So It certainly is. Wonderful. So, Michelle, can you remind everyone about the discount again before I say goodbye to you, please? Yes. So we've got free shipping for all orders yes. over $40. So if you type the code M-M-A-S-A-N, mixed media art, sand down 21 into your checkout, you will get that and it's valid until Sunday the 24th of October. Wonderful and so maybe Michelle can pop that code into the comments when we're done if that was all right so you know. Yeah we can do that. All good. Well thank you Michelle it's been lovely to have you for this session and I look forward to seeing you very shortly. Excellent thanks everyone. Thank you. So I hope you all enjoyed that incredible session with Michelle. Feel free to Please feel free to go and check out our website for all those products. Don't forget the discount. The code will be in the comments. We've loved having you and we look forward to joining you again. So this is Wendy Stewart signing off for this session. I've loved bringing it to you and hosting it. I hope you enjoy all the rest of the show. And remember, just give yourself a mission to be free, have fun, and just enjoy all your products. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you soon.